I'm Andy Brown, the editorial director of the Bloomberg New Economy. The Belt and Road Initiative is Chinese President Xi Jinping's visionary plan to connect Asia and Europe with trading, transport, and industrial infrastructure. In the West, the Belt and Road Initiative gets a terrible press. Is that criticism fair? Well, let's look at the five big myths of the Belt and Road. Myth number one, it's a debt trap. This is pretty unfair. The idea here is that China plies poor countries with unsupportable debt, and when they can't repay the loans, it then grabs physical infrastructure. Actually, there's only been one clear-cut example of this in Sri Lanka, where the Chinese helped to build a port which turned into a commercial flop, and then the Sri Lankan government was obliged to hand over the port to a Chinese state company, but that was an exception, not the rule. Having said that, China doesn't seem to have much regard for risk, scattering its loans around to countries that are already heavily indebted, like Pakistan, Mongolia, and Djibouti. Myth number two, Belt and Road is China's Marshall Plan. Actually, this gets everything backwards. The enduring legacy of the Marshall Plan was that it inculcated free market ideas in Europe and habits of cooperation among former enemies that underpinned democracy. To the extent that Belt and Road is about China's attempts to spread its own value, including state capitalism and authoritarian governance, in that sense, Belt and Road is the exact opposite of the Marshall Plan. Myth number three, Belt and Road is China's grand strategy. As a matter of fact, Belt and Road is a sprawling project. It's haphazard, it's chaotic, it's all about multiple actors jumping aboard a state-funded investment free-for-all. They have multiple different agendas, some of them conflicting. Certainly, it has a geopolitical aim, which is to draw China's neighbors more closely into its own economic orbit. But this doesn't add up to a grand strategy. Myth number four, China has unlimited amounts of money to pour into Belt and Road. Not true. Over time, it's quite likely that lending will exceed a trillion dollars, but won't come anywhere near the $8 trillion that some people report. What is the case is that Chinese spending is likely to be far less than the trillions of dollars that the United States squandered on fruitless wars in Asia and the Middle East over the past several decades. That's why the US can snipe at Belt and Road, but it doesn't have the financial resources to match it. Myth number five, it's all about Yuan internationalization. The idea here is that China is going to use Belt and Road to spread use of its own currency and challenge the mighty dollar. Well, the dollar is safe. It turns out that a majority of Belt and Road contracts are signed in dollars, not yuan. And actually, as China's access to dollars dwindles because its current account surpluses are narrowing, it's going to have less and less money to invest in Belt and Road projects in the future. 